Hey guys, in this video I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Swiss Vetterly and sort of an idea that, um, that I have about this gun. Um, so a little bit about this gun, the Swiss Vetterly, um, the guy who invented it was, was Swiss, so of course the, uh, the Swiss were one of the first ones to adopt it in uh, 1869. And this particular model is a, an 1871 model. Um, these are pretty cool guns because um, they do have a magazine tube under the barrel. You see it has the, uh, the King style uh, loading port here on the side. So these would be uh, single loaded, so, um, very similarly to a uh, lever action. Uh, in fact, these were pretty, uh, the, the magazine system on here was uh, pretty much a straight copy of like a, um, like a Hendry 1860 or like a Winchester um, 1866. So this rifle was actually the first bolt action repeating rifle um, adopted and issued in large numbers by a military in the world. Now this, the, the rifle, the cartridge that's chambered in is pretty neat because it's, uh, it's an old rimfire type like a, lot of the, uh, like a lot of the rifles were back then. It's kind of an interesting concept though because this rifle is chambered in a uh, 10 millimeter caliber that is um, a little lighter and a little slower than probably it should be um, compared to other calibers at the time. So, so comparing the, uh, the 41 Swiss caliber that this is chambered in, uh, comparing it to other calibers like the, uh, like the German 11 millimeter caliber of the, uh, the Gewehr 71, uh, comparing it to like the, uh, the, the British uh, 4, the British 577 slash 450, um, this is kind of on the side of an Amedia cartridge. It's, it's more powerful than, um, than a lot of the, the pistol rounds at the time, but it's less powerful than some of the, uh, the big single shot rifles that were fielded by a lot of militaries at the time. So you might consider this an intermediate cartridge and it's fired out of a rifle that has a very large capacity, uh, which is 12, which is a lot for, for the time. And then this rifle has a pretty high rate of fire. It's pretty much just as fast as you can work the bolt. Now this is a lot faster than say um, a, a single shot bolt action like the Gewehr 71 or like a trapdoor Springfield. Uh, the rate of fire on this is much, much higher. So I watched the video on InRange TV where Carl kind of suggests that um, maybe the lever action, like the Henry 1860 lever action, maybe that was the world's first assault rifle because it has a high rate of fire, it's an intermediate cartridge, uh, and a large capacity magazine. And so when I was thinking about this gun, I kind of thought that, uh, that this rifle kind of might fit the criteria of the time of being the the world's first uh, assault rifle adopted by a military just because it meets all those criteria. Now calling anything an assault rifle like Carl said it, it has a lot of baggage and it, it, it's kind of a loaded term where it has a lot of different connotations with it um, but I suggest that maybe just maybe the Swiss Vetterli was the first assault rifle adopted by a military in, in the world. And the Battle of Plevna kind of shows that an army that's equipped with a, uh, a magazine-fed rifle that has a pretty rapid rate of fire, um, it can really make a difference, especially against a, uh, an attacking superior force. And I would say that I wonder if they would have had the same exact results if instead of having um, lever action guns, how they had a whole bunch of Swiss Federalies. I think the guns are similar enough that they would have had uh, very similar outcomes. And maybe we would be talking about uh, the Swiss Federally today and, and how revolutionary it was. Unfortunately, and kind of fortunately for the Swiss, um, they've remained neutral for a long, long time. So um, Swiss firearms have not really been put through a major war, but I feel that the Swiss Federally might be a little underappreciated um, with what it was at the time, especially for the fact that you can get these guns for, for really cheap. They, they seem to be very undervalued. But yeah, I definitely suggest you picking up one of these if you can. They're, they're pretty cheap and they're a really uh, interesting mechanism uh, with how they work. Um, so I suggest picking one up if you can for a pretty good price. 
and uh, I think you you won't regret it. These are pretty neat, pretty neat gun, and it fits a pretty neat uh, spot in any sort of military history firearms collection. Appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. That helps me out, and I'll see you next time.